As you may already know, not all movement practices are designed in an equal way. In the Lit Yoga Method, we help you retrain your brain and body to move better for everyday life. Through physical therapy drills, yoga, functional mobility, core stability, and flexibility, the Lit Method rewires habitual movement patterns and postural imbalances to help you feel stronger, more energized, and more balanced, both on and off the mat. Our online platform, The Lit Daily, is designed for easy convenience with a robust offering of class types, so you can boost your energy while getting stress relief. Improved brain wiring means you will move with more ease and efficiency because we teach you the how and why behind movement choices, not just poses for the sake of poses. All movement teachers on the platform are certified by LIT and share a common language providing education with clear cues that give you the needed reinforcement for enhancing your movement habits. Thousands of students in over 50 countries get LIT to feel more confident, more powerful, and more alive. We offer two subscription options for all levels and bodies. The Lit Daily option consists of over 500 classes in our library, with so many categories I can't even list them, but some include short on time, injury prevention, stress reliefs, and different body parts. There's also a Tuesday and Thursday live class that's streamed on the daily, and there's always a class of the day to help you take the guesswork out of what class to do. Lit Daily members also get 50% off the monthly workshops. The Lit Prime subscription offer has everything in the daily, plus over 20 weekly live Zoom classes with Lit teachers providing real-time feedback. This is wonderful for community and to get your feedback from a teacher for your own alignment. We also get free monthly workshops in the Lit Prime option. Both of these are streamable right into any TV or device through an Android, iPhone, and iPad apps. Movement changes everything, and when we move better, we feel better. So sign up for our free two-week trial and see how getting lit can help you feel your best today and for years to come. I'm Laura Hyman, and welcome to Redefining Movement, a lit podcast designed to investigate all aspects of movement from my background in physical therapy and neuroscience. My mission is to help everyone find freedom through smarter movement patterns and compassion for ourselves and others. So together we can live our most uplifted lives, benefiting all beings. Welcome to another episode of Redefining Movement and our special Work Well series. Today we're going to dive into the transformative power of kindness in the workplace. I'm thrilled to be joined by Josh Kilmer Purcell and Brent Ridge the dynamic duo behind Beekman 1802. From the moment we start our conversation, their passion for infusing kindness into every facet of their company becomes abundantly clear. Brent and Josh share the remarkable origin story of Beekman 1802, where an act of kindness toward a struggling neighbor sparked the beginnings of their now thriving business. They reveal how kindness has been the guiding force behind their company's ethos, extending not only to their employees and consumers, but also to their community and beyond. We explore the concept of kindness in the workplace, going beyond mere niceness to discuss the significant physiological and emotional impact of genuine acts of kindness. Brent and Josh explain their innovative approach, setting the stage for a workplace culture centered on kindness and how it significantly affects employee retention and satisfaction. Here's my conversation with Josh and Brent. Welcome, Brent and Josh. I'm so happy to have you both here. We're great great to to be here. here. I would love to hear a little bit about your history at Beekman 1802 and then how you progressed or even began with this seed idea of kindness. Kindness was the first product of Beekman 1802, we always say. Before we ever made a single bar of soap, before we made any other products, kindness was the first. And it all started because Brent and I were two New York City guys. Brent was a doctor. I was a writer. We were traveling in upstate New York one autumn weekend to go apple picking. And we stumbled on this little town and this farm that was for sale. We fell in love with it. We bought it. And then we got a letter in our mailbox from a neighbor. And his name is Farmer John. He was losing his farm. He had 80 goats and nowhere to bring them. And he asked if he could bring them to our farm. We always say that was the first act of kindness because we said, sure, bring your goats. In fact, there was another little house. We said, you come to John. And long before we ever thought we were going to start a company, that act of kindness set us up because it was two years later when the big recession of 2008 hit, we both lost our jobs. And we literally Googled, what can we make with goat milk? And soap was the first thing that came up. And if we hadn't had those goats, we wouldn't have started the company and saved the farm. 
everything about that is so heartwarming, but it's also so impressive that you literally just had this huge instinct and went right for it. I mean, just to have a visit turn into an entire change in your life. Was that like a quick decision? You just led with your heart? Yes. I mean, certainly some of it was serendipity, but we were so in love with the farm that we bought in the community and the community was so welcoming to us as two gay New York City professionals moving to a very rural part of the state. But everyone was so welcoming that it just felt natural to return that kindness favor to everyone. As urban folk, did you have any idea of how to care for a goat? No. And that was part of the reason we said, John, you come too. So yeah. Farmer John came with the goats. And it was funny. In, in the very beginning, we were determined to learn as much as we can and like milk the goats with John every morning and do all the chores. And then we realized that the goats really did prefer Farmer John milking them versus <laughs> <laughs> two New York City guys. Well, I loved um, reading about how your ethos extends to the animals, to obviously the consumers, the customers, and then to your own family of employees. I think it's beautiful. That includes everybody in the whole circle. Yes, it really is our North Star kindness guides, not only us, but everybody in our organization. And I always say it's so wonderful to have a one word company mission because it's so easy for all of the employees every day, all the decisions they have to weigh to have one very easy answer to every question. And that's lead with kindness. And that is the what. So what do you think is the why? Why is this so important as this North Star for your company or for any company? But obviously, you're doing it so authentically and just applying it in ways that okay. maybe... I'm going to let Brent answer that, but I'm going to answer with one word that's going to surprise people. Why kindness in a company? Profit. People think that it's a nice to have or a very soft thing, kindness, or nice to have a kind workplace. We have proven that kindness drops right to the bottom line. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we both grew up in very rural parts of the country. So that kind of ethos was in us to begin with. But I think having gone through the recession, having lost really everything that we had worked for up until that point in our careers, just put us in a mindset that made us more receptive to this idea of, hey, we're in this together. We need to think about one another and it's how we support one another and how we show up for one another and how we build a community. And going Back to what Josh said about that original act of kindness, bringing Farmer John on, the neighbors in our little village, when we had nothing, rallied around us. They helped us wrap those original bars of soap at our dining room table. The reciprocation of kindness was really critical to help our company grow. And as the company did grow and did succeed, we could see two things happening. One, we could see that from a consumer level, this idea of a community working together to accomplish something and this idea of kindness really did resonate with the consumer. And we could see how powerful that was. And we could see that there was a hunger and a desire for people for this type of community building that we were trying to do. And then as the company started growing, we thought, well, okay, we don't want to lose that. So what are we going to do to keep ourselves from losing that? And for the first, I would say, four or five years of the company, there were basically five employees. But then after that, it really started taking off up until the point now where we're over 100 employees. We decided early on, we wanted to try to figure out how we're going to instill this idea of kindness and the importance of kindness as we added new team members. So taking inspiration from the Ritz-Carlton who codified their approach to hospitality and like built such a great program for their employees. Then they started contracting it out and other people can now send their employees to take this. We did the same thing. We first started out by building this curriculum for our own employees about here's how you treat one another in our company. Here's how you treat our consumer. Here's how we incorporate kindness into every touch point, whether it's with our vendors, whether it's with our customer, here's how we incorporate kindness. And that became so popular among our employees and particularly our new employees who are coming in and onboarding with it, that we then turned it into a consumer facing course and people could come to our shop in Sharon Springs, New York for a full day immersive workshop in kindness. And that became so popular that we started thinking, okay, how can we start building out on this and hopefully reaching more people? And at the same time, of course, last year, the whole buzzword was artificial intelligence. How are companies going to leverage artificial intelligence? And there was this great company called kindworks.ai who had developed an algorithm-based kindness prompt for employees. So what it does is it embeds into your 
Outlook program or your um, Slack program. And every day it will give you a prompt to do an act of kindness for yourself or an act of kindness for someone in the company. And it uses artificial intelligence to figure out what is the time of day that you're most likely to respond to a prompt, most likely to spread that kindness. And then it can track by teams how many acts of kindness are done. And then ultimately, the ultimate goal is to match productivity to teams that are high performing on kindness. And so we are one of the first CPG companies to implement this. So it's still kind of in its beta form. We're helping them further develop that. And our hope is that after we see how it works in our own company, that then we will be able to create a consumer facing version of this artificial intelligence as well. So every day the consumer can get these prompts for kindness that are customized to help them incorporate more kindness into their lives. Wow. That is incredible. And there's a lot to go off of that. But the first thing I'll ask, very basic, like how would you define kindness? I think we know what feels kind, but beyond like being nice, how would you define it? And then can you give us a few examples of these codified ways of implementing kindness? Kindness is actions that comes at a cost. A lot of people confuse kindness with niceness, and they're very, very different, especially when it comes to the workplace. You can be nice. Actually, many times people are nice because you don't have to pay a cost. You can tell somebody, I love your dress, even if you hate it, or ignore that somebody has a piece of spinach in their teeth because that's a nice thing to do as opposed to be kind and say, look, you've got something in your teeth. So first of all, you have to really identify what kindness is. And as you say, I believe that it has to come at some sort of cost to self. From you know, my specialty in medicine was longevity, which is certainly tied to prevention and behavioral changes. I always say kindness is wellness. And as we are learning more and more every day, acts of kindness, whether you give them or whether you receive them, have profound physiological impact on the body, even on a cellular level. And to tie into what Josh was saying about it comes at a cost, kindness does take work. And just like any other type of preventative practice, whether it's choosing the right foods or deciding to exercise every day or do movement every day, it does take effort, but there is reward as a result of that effort. I would say that's my decision. Isn't that the case for everything? Like, I think Mm -hmm. you don't get a reward unless there is effort. Like that cost is energy. So on that note, what are the physiological changes? that are noticed? And how is that manifest in workers' wellness, health? So if you look at the fundamentals of what's happening when you get an act of kindness, I always tell people, you know, when you give an act of kindness, or even someone gives you this unexpected moment of kindness, and you get that glow feeling inside, it's like that warming feeling inside, that doesn't just happen. Like that's the release of a lot of neurochemicals into the blood system. And so your dopamine levels increase, your serotonin levels increase, your cortisol levels decrease. It's the combination of all of those things that are causing that sensation that you're getting, that kind of flush, that internal glow, like is what we say, is coming from those. And all of those different neurochemicals are actually having impact on the body. Of course, we know so much about cortisol and what it's doing in terms of inflammation in the body. But some studies are even looking at DNA methylation and how acts of kindness can actually change the rate of decay in cells and so help slow down the aging process. So a tremendous number of actual physiological benefits just from something as what you think of as unimportant as this act of kindness. We are a skin health company, so we are concerned with what all these things do on the surface of your skin. And if you look at these neurochemicals, particularly cortisol, how they impact the microbiome on the surface of the skin is quite profound. And so we say that we're not only helping you develop that external glow from the use of the product, we're helping you develop that glow from the inside. Now, of course, that's our consumer facing proposition, but the same applies to our employees too, because our employees are basically the spokespeople for our company. You know, everyone they interact with, they are espousing these ideals. And each other. So internally, you really, truly can't even compare our retention rate of employees to the industry. I was just industry. about to ask, because this is going back to your original point that kindness is for the bottom line and yeah. that retention is huge. And it's a huge problem right now. 
It is. And when I tell you, you can't even measure ours against others, you can't measure it because we rarely lose anybody. Maybe once a year, like someone will move on to another company. And just as importantly is the inverse, which is recruitment. And Brent and I interview every employee that comes in to the company, of course. And when we ask them why they're coming, every single one of them, the first thing is they want a kind culture. And that's their own research on our company. So just by looking online and seeing our social media and doing the slight bit of research about the company, what they walk away with, their most important thing is that it's a kind culture. Since other people obviously know about this and they're even looking it up, like other companies, have they come to you and want to recreate this model, realizing that it's not just about some kind of optics or anything. It has a real profound impact, as you Mm -hmm. said, on employee satisfaction and retention and everything. The first obstacle, of course, is that kindness is hard to measure. So a lot of reasons that other companies don't adopt it is because it's hard to put a number on it. And that's what business is, is, you know, numbers. So that's why we worked with kindness.org as a partner to do research. And they developed the first scientifically validated tool to measure kindness in an organization. It's based on a survey that was validated with Harvard scientists, Oxford scientists, researchers. So first, if you can get that number, if you can get that kindness quotient for your company, then you can measure it on a continuing basis every year or biannually and see if you're improving or not improving. And then you measure your KPI metrics of your company against that kindness quotient and see if it correlates. So we're sort of in the early days of that. The first thing was to be able to measure it and put a number on it. And we have a scientific way to do that now. And just as a side note, I'm curious because I'm a little bit of a, I guess, not rebel, but just I do things a little differently. And being a pioneer, sometimes people can scoff at you. Have you experienced Mm -hmm. like (laughs) this being like, (laughs) it's probably at the end of the day when you're really, I mean, I know the feeling like when you're really passionate, you don't really care about that. But I'm wondering if that has been an issue. I think sometimes it's less scoffing than like patronizing, you know, like, oh, it's really nice. That's a nice marketing thing that you've got going there. And it's a kind little company, you know, up in the middle of New York with goats. And that's really sweet. So we get that a lot. But (laughs) then at the same time, we're one of the fastest growing brands in our category. So there is a correlation if people choose to see it. I love that. Can you give me a few examples of some of the kindness protocol? Like what would be an example of team activities or initiatives that they do on a daily basis that tick the kindness meter? Yeah, I'll give a great example. As we said, we have been in business for 15 years now and have always worked really hard to incorporate kindness and making sure that we're doing that in our company. And when we started using this AI tool, one of the first prompts I got for an act of kindness was to reach out to an employee in the company. It always does an employee by random. So it says, reach out to X person. And if you don't know them, ask them something about themselves or ask them how their day was doing. And, you know, at this point in our company, we have over a hundred employees. And so we don't have intimate day-to-day interactions with every employee, particularly post-pandemic. And so this prompt early on in use of the AI submitted an employee's name who I had very little interaction with. And all of a sudden, I just got so nervous about reaching out to this person and asking them about their day or about a personal question from them. And I thought, wow, if that happens to me, and I'm so embedded in this practice and understanding of kindness, what does that mean for the average person? And if you look at the research in kindness, the biggest hindrance people have from being more kind is that sense that they will be embarrassed. Right. The confidence to be able to pose the question. Yeah, exactly. And so that's just an example of going outside your comfort zone and being prompted to do it. And what was great about this exercise using the AI tool was that it gives people cover for their lack of confidence, because if they say, oh, I don't want to just blindly go out and do that, you can say, oh, you know what? My prompt today was to ask you this. And so it gives them cover. And then and it starts the whole yeah. dialogue. Starts it. Oh, I love and that. And I think there's a great takeaway in that that embarrassment tied to kindness is because we're socialized to believe that kindness is a weakness rather than a strength. So we struggle to be kind. Yes. And it's like purposeful water cooler talk. And what it's basically saying is I see you and I'm taking the time to hear you and getting out of your own 
that discomfort is really the me, me, meanness of it. Like, what is this going to feel like for me? And it's really offering somebody your undivided attention, which we know is scarce. But that's what, at the end of the day, most people want is just to be seen and heard. One hundred percent. And you said that beautifully. And part of this AI tool it gives you the estimated time it's going to take you to do this act of kindness. And for instance, that prompt was like, this is a 15 second activity. All you have to do is send the email or send the text message. And I think that helps as well when people realize, wow, that such a small amount of my time can have such a big impact. And what I love about it is this is habit formation. You will need a cue at first, a guideline, and then it's going to feel good. Like both parties actually benefit. They feel really good from that interaction. And then it's going to be something that's much more automatic. You know, I feel like I do this a lot as I'm teaching people about their body and movement. And I'm always like, why didn't we learn anything? We barely even had sex ed, you know, and everybody was all at Twitter about that. Like this should be something that is standard, a kindness course in high school. And for me, it's like understanding functional anatomy, but instead we're doing other things. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Aren't going to make us better humans per se. So that's right. right. And I will tell people that, as Josh mentioned, we had funded this research with kindness.org to develop the kindness quotient. But if you go to their website, kindness.org, they have so many free tools for workplaces and even childhood education on how you can incorporate small amounts of kindness. And they really do add up. Oh, I love that. On another note, you're the head of this company and it's thriving. How do you personally deal with outside of the company, the state of even our country right now, where there's so much lack of kindness, lack of compassion, lack of willingness to even understand or listen to somebody else if they have a different perspective? For us, it has always been about leading by example. We have very public profiles on social media. And yes, sometimes there is dissent and sometimes there are discussions, but they almost never get too negative because we've spent 15 years setting a standard of how we interact with one another and how this community that we've created interacts with one another. Even in some of the worst times that we've had in the public discourse over the past four or five years, things remained pretty much the same in our Beacon neighborhood even though we knew that there was certainly differing polarizing opinions outside of the neighborhood, we can just focus on the area Mm -hmm. that we have control over and influence. I'll just completely steal from Mr. Rogers because he says when he was younger and he was scared and his mother would say, look for the helpers. There's always people helping. And I think that's really important, especially as we go into this year in America, which we know is going to be vitriolic and not kind a lot of the time. Look for the kindness. Don't focus on the bad things and the meanness that's happening. Look for the acts of kindness and focus on those. Amen. I love that. That's really beautiful. It's like be the change, be the example and lead by that. And I think it's powerful. And like you said, we need more of the helpers out there. Speaking of helpers, I would love for you to talk a little bit about this Nurses First program, which the waves that you're sending out beyond your own company are really impressive. So can you speak a little bit about what inspired that? Obviously, Brent, your background in medicine, but I'm sure there's more to it. We are always trying to figure out how we can elevate the public discourse around kindness. And we always say how to start the ripple. And so we thought, okay, well, nurses, they're of the most empathetic careers. And we saw this study by the American Nurses Association that on average, one nurse will touch 40 people per day with an act of empathy or with an act of kindness. And so we thought, wow, if we can do something that can really help support nurses and help further their missions, then we're going to start those ripples in a lot of ways. Because if they touch 40 people, and then even if half of those people that they touch in that day with an act of kindness, then spread that kindness out, then the ripple gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why we decided to focus on nurses over the past couple of years and working with the American Nurses Association not only bringing more of them into you know our fold in terms of influencers and like helping them spread our message through social media, but giving back a portion of our proceeds, particularly on one particular product, this hand cream that we work with nurses to develop, to help support nursing education. 
so that we are taking this next generation of nurses who are coming up and saying, you know what, we value what you're doing, not only from a healthcare perspective, but from the perspective of kindness and how that goes out into the community in which you live. Wow. And talk about retention troubles. I mean, I know when I was working in a clinical setting, that was 25 years ago. It was challenging to find nurses that would stick around for a while. Really dutiful, challenging role, and they should be rewarded substantially in so many ways. But yes, kindness is a huge part of that. And the fact that they're just giving of themselves so much is lovely. Well, and ultimately, all anyone wants to do is be appreciated for what they do. You know, if you think back to the pandemic, when you had the people applauding the frontline workers and things like that, then think about that. Just the act of applauding them was enough for them to continue to risk their lives. Like the single act of applauding someone risking your life. Like I know, just a little acknowledgement. It's amazing. That acknowledgement and that praise went such a long way. But they're doing that in some way every day, not just during the right. pandemic. It was obviously and, and, and that goes for any profession. And kindness.org's research has shown that employees value being respected and having their skills respected more than salary. So if you are a startup company or a small company or financially strapped company, just know that you don't have to just try to win on salary or recruit on salary. You can recruit on respect. This is wonderful to talk to you both. I would just love to just wrap up by asking if there's any other holistic well-being programs that you have in mind or have already in place for your employees with kindness being the key ingredient. Kindness sprinkles into everything. Yep. Physical, mental, I'm sure there's social. Yep. In addition to the AI services that we implement, every employee gets their kindness day each quarter where they can go out and volunteer in their communities. And even those little things like that, that reinforce how important kindness is in our company, how important kindness is globally, are really empowering for the employee. It really adds to their sense of fulfillment at work, their sense that they are achieving work-life balance if that can be achieved. And it's good. This goes a long way, just those small things. Well, you're obviously doing a spectacular job with keeping everybody happy and kind and motivated and looking beautiful <laughs> Feel <laughs> in the meantime, right? Soft yes, skin exactly. and all, all the other stuff. We make you glow different. That's what we yeah, say. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Glowing from the inside out. Thank you so much. Keep doing your spectacular job. And thank you so much for spreading kindness, teaching kindness, and prioritizing kindness in your own well, lives and in the lives of others. Well, thank you, Lara, for thank you. Spread the kindness. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Redefining Movement. If you like what you've heard, please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to leave us a rating and review or share with someone you know. Check us out at www.litmethod.com.